An ancient proverb talks about the woman of noble character. If you're not familiar with this popular ideal, you can read it in the Bible. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. The virtuous woman, which is the term used in some English translations, seems to be able to accomplish everything and do it all perfectly. But if you notice, this text extols the virtues of her work, not her identity. Her identity is assumed. But today's woman reads this and becomes a human doing instead of a human being. She loses her identity. Let's talk about that. Hello, I'm Dr. Debbie, and I've been helping men, women, and couples grow together for more than 25 years. Now it's your turn to learn what I learned and taught as a couples counselor and university professor. You are the wise woman, and this is your personal development podcast packed with instant encouragement and practical tips, and men can learn about women too, because this is a safe place where women are valued and men are respected. We talk about biology, socialization, behavior, emotions, communication, and connection, because men and women are different. Always have been, always will be, and that's a very good thing. As women, we can easily get caught up in competition to be the best and have the best in everything. We fear missing out and falling short of the ideal. So we dance as fast as we can for as long as we can every single day, going round in circles and getting nowhere. We worry constantly about almost everything. Our husbands, our families, our health, their health, and money, or the lack thereof. We have forgotten how to relax. We're perpetually exhausted. There's never enough time. We struggle with shame and guilt. We find fault with our own bodies. Some days we want to give up, but we don't know how. So we trudge onward, striving for perfection that we can never attain. We scroll through social media and feel worse about ourselves and our lives. We go to seminars and retreats and nothing changes. We read books, and in our own heads, we argue with the authors who obviously don't know what real life is like. We wish our husbands would help out more, or be more romantic, or work harder, or stop watching so much TV, or doing whatever it is they're doing, especially when they're doing nothing. We resent a man's ability to do nothing, because we don't know how to do nothing. We can't sit still for very long. So much needs to be done and no one steps up to help. They couldn't do it as well as we could anyway. No wonder we're exhausted all the time. Everything shouts at us constantly. The dishes, the garbage, the laundry. And I'm not just talking about women who are at home. Even married women who work a full-time job feel the pull to handle the housework. And research shows that in dual-income households, the wife still does most of the household chores. Before you blame that on lazy men, let's consider our own role. We tend to be very particular about how things are done, right down to how bath towels are folded. If we try to delegate, we end up micromanaging the person assigned to the task. No wonder men hesitate to help out. Besides, most of what we're obsessed with doesn't matter all that much to men. Even so, we can't figure out any other way to do life. We're lost in the chaos, and we've lost who we are. Furthermore, a healthier approach is not often obvious. In reality, the solutions to our dilemmas are usually simple, but they're rarely easy. I think our current day problem is well described in Proverbs 31. Now, I don't think Solomon was intentionally trying to mess with women's sense of self-worth. I suspect identity was not such a big issue for the women of his day. Their community was well-established with common values and beliefs, and they didn't have social media. But our feminine identity is a big issue for us. Without a deep sense of our own value, we engage in competition with one another for who has the most beautiful home the most attractive and fit body, the smartest and most well-behaved children, and the most successful and romantic husband. It's an emotional merry-go-round and no one can win the race. 
why not do something different? Let's think about embracing a dream of what's possible beyond your present circumstances. That's what a wise woman's podcast is all about. The good news is you don't have to try to be someone you're not. You already have the seeds of noble character right there within you. Instead of ignoring your God-given value, learn to nurture and care for the virtuous woman you already are. See yourself as God sees you. Then practice living from His wisdom and understanding. You're not missing out on anything because you're already more than you realize. Now, it is an ongoing process of personal development that you get to choose to participate in. Life is difficult, and we want those challenges to go away, to submit to our desire, but they don't. Life will always be filled with challenges. That does not mean you're doing something wrong. It means you're alive. As you contemplate this major change in mindset, let's take a look at the virtuous woman of noble character. Who is she? What qualities does she have? How does she see herself? Why does she matter? Are you ready? Let's dive in and talk about five of her qualities. She is beautiful, brilliant, bold, blessed, and becoming. You'll notice she's growing into them just like you and me. First, a woman of noble character is beautiful. She's created from the beginning to be beautiful, like her mother Eve. Remember the serpent went after her instead of Adam in the garden. I believe it was because he was jealous of her beauty and because he knew she had a prime position in her husband's heart. If the serpent could deceive the woman, get her to eat the forbidden fruit, then she would have the power to convince her husband to follow suit. And the serpent's deception worked. First, he exploited her fear of missing out by telling her God was holding out on her. He claimed that if she ate the forbidden fruit, she would become like God. He enticed her with something she already had. She was already created in the image of God. Then he exploited her beauty using Adam's positive regard and desire to please his wife to take him down from his position as her protector and as resident manager of the earth. Not much has changed in that regard. Women still fear missing out, and men still yield their higher calling to keep from hurting their wives or making them angry. We need to keep both of those facts in mind as we consider our daily challenges. Nevertheless, a woman of noble character is not Eve. And she's not her mother. She is one of a kind. No one like her has ever existed before. That means that she is kind of like Eve because she is the first. And she knows that. She embraces her uniqueness and lives from it. Not in a narcissistic way, but in a solid sense of herself. She is comfortable in her own skin. She embraces each stage of her physical development, knowing that her body was designed to change to adapt at each stage of her life. She looks in the mirror and sees a real woman who is living a real life. She doesn't worry about going through pregnancy or growing older, but focuses on being the best she can be at every stage. She takes care of her own health first and foremost. Now, it's not easy, especially when she has small children, but she knows the value of rest and sleep over an immaculate house. She knows a spotless house is a waste of time. She knows her own value. Her heart and soul matter. She never trades them in for momentary gains or trying to look good or overshadow her competitors. She carries herself confidently throughout the day. Like I said, she knows she's beautiful. Second, a woman of noble character is brilliant. She's confident in her ability to think things through. She knows when to take a time out, when to give herself space to reflect and analyze. She knows how to process her own emotions and manage her mood. She pays attention to what she feels, asking herself, what does this feeling mean? Where's it coming from? What action, if any, do I need to take? She is fully aware of her intellectual contributions. She knows how and when to make her thoughts and ideas known. 
She has no need to show off, and she never runs over anyone else with her ideas, including her husband. She constantly refines her communication skills, especially with her husband, because she knows men speak a different language, and she's willing to learn it. She knows she doesn't know everything. She listens to learn. She reads. She studies. She experiments with what she learns if it seems like it would be worth a try or two. She holds on to what works and lets go of the rest. She monitors her own weaknesses without self-condemnation. She's self-aware, not self-absorbed. She knows not everything is about her. Therefore, she doesn't keep track of the times she's been wronged. She has no need to get even with anyone. Instead, she asks herself what might be going on for someone who just behaved in such a hurtful and non-productive way. She respects men and honors her husband. She knows how to get what she wants without manipulation or drama, without putting down men or dismissing them, and without trying to be a man. She appreciates men for who they are and who they are becoming, knowing they are also on a growth track. Even so, she never lets any man demean her. She knows she doesn't have to enter into a verbal altercation to defend herself. She knows when to walk away. Like I said, she is brilliant. Third, a woman of noble character is bold. She doesn't hold back from her calling. She doesn't walk on anyone to get where she's going, but she is willing to go around someone if needed. If she's married, she knows how to negotiate with her husband instead of ignoring his concerns. She understands the depth of his desire to protect her. She finds comfort in that fact rather than feeling threatened by it. She's not ruled by shame. She knows the power of empathy to remove shame, even her own. She knows that being guilty of a wrongdoing is not the same thing as feeling bad about who she is. She knows she doesn't always get it right, and she's aware of her own motives, although sometimes that occurs after the fact because she's still learning more about herself all the time. She knows how to give herself grace, as well as how to pass that grace on to others. She's a heroine on a mission. Her husband and her family are her top priorities, but she knows they're not her only calling in life. She's ambitious, to be sure, but she never ignores her family in the process of achieving other goals. Instead, she finds time for both. If what she's doing causes her to lose sight of either one, she makes adjustments, quickly and often, evaluating her effectiveness at frequent intervals and listening to her husband's feedback. She remembers that he wants to protect her, not control her, and he can see things she can't see, just as she can see things he can't see. She knows how and when to set boundaries. She surrounds herself with people who are growing, just like she is and she limits the time she spends with anyone who drags her down with their complaining. She can listen to feedback, even criticism, evaluate it, then take it if it fits, and leave it if it doesn't. Like I said, she is bold. Fourth, a woman of noble character is blessed. She is grateful for all that she has and for the woman that she is. She knows she's earned some of it, but much of what she has and who she is is a gift. Her genetics, her family, where she lives. It may not all be good, but everything and everyone have played a role in her development. And for that, she is thankful. She shares her blessings with others. She believes she's been blessed to be a blessing, not to selfishly lord her gifts and her successes over others. She mentors other women encouraging them to become the heroines of their own stories. She receives and gives love without reservation. She is patient and kind. She does not envy what others have, and she never brags about what she has or what she's accomplished. Instead, she honors others and their unique journeys. She doesn't keep track of others' mistakes or offenses. She doesn't gossip about others' misfortunes. She always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Like I said, she is blessed.
Finally, a woman of noble character is always in the process of becoming. She strives to live a life of integrity. That means she keeps her promises, not only to others, but especially to herself. When she says she's going to do something, she follows through. She gives herself grace because she makes mistakes. Lots of mistakes. Mostly because she's willing to take risks to put herself out there. But she doesn't get caught in the trap of self-condemnation. Instead, she learns from her mistakes and keeps moving forward. She never gives up. She knows there's always room for improvement, and she's willing to put in maximum effort to keep growing. If she needs to heal old wounds, she finds an experienced therapist who has the skills and compassion to help her navigate the process. If she's caught in family dysfunction, she finds a 12-step support group. That's a great place to learn and practice boundaries. And when things seem to be going pretty well, she invests in her own personal development. Like I said, she's always in the process of becoming. To sum it all up, a woman of noble character is beautiful, brilliant, bold, blessed, and becoming the best she can be. In my opinion, if you've listened to this entire episode, you are indeed a woman of noble character. That doesn't mean you've achieved perfection. It does mean you know you're in good company. That is, you know you're not the only woman who's in process of becoming more of who you're meant to be. You are developing a vision of what's possible beyond your present circumstances. And I'm so glad you're here. To give you a few ideas about how you can make your life even better than it is, I've posted some links to some of my favorite resources in the show notes. Be sure to check them out and let me know how it goes. Remember, I'm here to help. Thank you for listening to this episode of A Wise Woman's Guide to Men and Marriage. What did you think? Did the information raise more questions? Do you want to learn more? Head over to wisewomansguide.com for show notes and links to the resources mentioned in this episode. And if you're looking for other wise women to bounce around ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for women on Facebook. The link is waiting for you at awisewomansguide.com.